Would you like to learn what altcoins are in my 100 to 1000x crypto portfolio for 2024 with the potential to turn $10,000 into $1 million, if not 10 million? 2024, if we are following traditional crypto market cycles, should mark the beginning of the bull run, the ascendancy for Bitcoin to go to new all-time highs, to take altcoins with it, making massive multipliers and generational wealth for investors in one cycle that should arguably be 18 months to two years. In a bull run, which I personally believe will be the most violent that we have ever seen and the most institutionally led that we have ever seen. We should be seeing the big banks and central government entities getting into cryptocurrency, therefore enabling for the masses to get into cryptocurrency. Having said that, I also believe that we are not yet at that pivot point where we are going to be going to new all-time highs and there is still a chance for altcoins to come and return back to investable prices in order for you to be able to make massive wealth in the next bull market. My name is the Superman, your superhero of 100 to 1000 X altcoins. I have found them in the past. I bought you Matic where before it made a 1000x, Solana before it made a 100x, and also Cardano before it made a 100x. So, and even recently, I bought you Bunk in a bear market and it did a 110x from the point that I spoke about it. So, if you love content like this, what I would love for you to do is do very simple task of just tapping that like button. If you haven't yet, make sure that you subscribe so that you never miss out on alpha that I have provided in the past in my last six and a half years in cryptocurrency where I have made massive multipliers for many. So just before I get going, let me just share this over to the people of Twitter. Uh, oh, hold on. Smash a heart. By the way, if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure that you do. If you are coming. <laughs> that sounds lewd, doesn't it? Right, there we are. Done and done. So what I'm going to be providing with for you in this video is I am going to be providing you with my portfolio. You are going to be seeing two portfolios. You are going to be seeing, first of all, my legacy portfolio. I've been in cryptocurrency since March 2017. I've been in cryptocurrency since Bitcoin was at $1,200 or in pounds, it wasn't even a thousand pounds yet. So I have been building up since 2017 to 2021 a legacy portfolio, which consists of coins that I still believe have a lot of potential and my new portfolio. These are cryptocurrencies that I've been investing in during this bear market. And you are going to be seeing, when, with both of these portfolios, you are going to be seeing the narrative of the coin, the risk level of the coin, what position size I have got in the coin, and what, what percentage that makes up of my portfolio. Is it their first cycle? Because the first hype cycle for a cryptocurrency is the most bullish, the most violent in terms of multipliers. My buy price, the current price, the top price, the gain if you bought from today's price, and the gain if you bought, no, the gain if you bought from where I bought in, and so that's, this is my multiplier, and then the gain if you were to buy today, and similar with my new portfolio. So what I've got here is my gain so far, and where I predict the highest bull price will go. Now, at the end of the day, although I am exceptional at predictions, they don't always 100% work. Or if I say that Solana could go to 1200, then use that as a barometer for where the market can go. But ultimately, I don't know. I don't know if Bitcoin is going to be attacked by quantum computing. I don't know if Solana is going to go down by the beginning of 2026. I don't know this, but this is based on the momentum 
based on my personal intuition, having been in this market for near seven years, seeing how the market runs, seeing how major assets can still have a fantastic run in a bull market. This is where my predictions come from. Uh, also, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be providing you with headline stats as to, you know, uh, wh my, what percentages are, are kind of blue chip cryptocurrencies to very, very high risk. And also, what, how many cryptocurrencies have I bought that are over a dollar versus those that are under a dollar? And what narratives have I predominantly invested in? I'm also going to be looking at additions to my portfolio and deletions. So what I have got in my legacy portfolio and in my new portfolio could actually be additions and deletions as well. All right. So I am looking to delete some cryptocurrencies from my portfolio, reinvest it into something I actually really want and something that's potentially newer and has better multipliers ahead for it. So all of that is to come. So... My personal prediction is, is that we have got, at this present time, we have got incredible ETF speculation. It is something I've predicted for the last two years as being one of the major catalysts for the next bull market, which is that an ETF is going to kick off everything. An ETF is going to land at the perfect time. Once we've got regulation, once we have had a recession, an ETF is going to be granted for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, and possibly for some other major assets, which is then going to lead to uh, bigger multipliers and sizable multipliers in an uninterrupted run. Where we are at this present time is we have got ETF speculation in the midst of a recession that is going to be announced at some point, hopefully during 2024. And the reason why I say hopefully is because it's important that for a bull run to thrive is that we have no interruptions. We have nothing that is going to put a big spanner in the works. And a recession, as we saw in 2008, led to a seven-year tumbling of prices for the stock market. So imagine what a recession could do to the crypto market. Much, much worse. And if that lands in 2025, that's the last thing we want. We want an uninterrupted run. So my personal belief is it is going to land this year. We are going to get a, an occasion to rebuy into cryptocurrencies that we may have liked or earmarked during the bear market, which I believe is still going on, and then just be perfectly poised to make optimal bull market multipliers in the next run. Now, if you haven't already, make sure that you join the cryptocurrency investment course for $9.99. In the link in the description, go to the final lecture, join the Telegram group, and I will be letting you know what I am buying in real time. And as you know, I am waiting for other for certain prices before I buy more. Another thing I wanted to let you know is, is that something that gives me a good read as to are we ready for a bull run is this. The, the, addresses, the addresses that hold 1,000 Bitcoins or less because this is a, these are the whale wallets. Now, I'm going to show you this first of all. So, from where quantitative uh, tightening started, which was around about March 2022, what we have seen is we have seen that whilst the Bitcoin has actually gone from 16,000 up to over 40,000, is that wallets of over 1,000 Bitcoins have actually been selling into all of this, it's been selling. There has been no uptick at all in the addresses in 1,000 Bitcoin wallets. Now, you could say, oh, well, what about these wallets? Well, all of these wallets belong to little players. These are the big players, the 1K wallets. Now, if I just go and take you back and show you what happened in the last bull market, what happened was, is in between 2017 and 2020, is that we saw that Bitcoin went from $20,000 down to $3,000. That marked the pivot point at which the whales actually started to get in. Address balances went up, kept going up, kept going up, and that nicely corresponded, the amount of addresses going up corresponded with the Bitcoin price going up. So this is saying to me the whales have still not gotten in yet. So that is showing that there is somewhat fear around a recession, around the macroeconomic model. So that is my, and this is my, I suppose, the prelude, the story, the backstory as to why I am not fully poised yet for my positions in the next bull run, and also why I am not buying, even as prices are going up right now, why I'm not buying yet. 
because I just do not believe that we are perfectly poised to make that run yet. So I am just going to go straight into the action because there's so much to cover. Just before I do, I have seen there is a ginormous, a ginormous uh, donation from Joe Bars. Thank you very much for two hundred dollars. That is that is unbelievable. That's unbelievable. You are a champion of, of donations, basically. <laughs> and you have to get the Monaco Karma. You know, I wake up every morning, I'm like, oh which God, you have I'm gotten, I'm sure, Monaco. many, I'm many in times. A, in a dream. Really? Really? Yes. You know. Because you just deserve it. Thank you very much, Joe Bars Mo Moonbeam. And also, congratulations on the recent uptick in the Moonbeam price. That's an insane donation. Thank you very much. Tommy Villes, what's that I hearing? Oh wait, it's the stud alarm. Let's go all the way to Monaco. Thank you very much, Tommy Villes. Or Tommy Viles. Right, okay, so let's begin with my legacy portfolio. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take too long going through this. I just want to just let you know what I have got, basically, so that you have an understanding. So, first things first, we have got Bitcoin. Now, as I said, I have the first cryptocurrency I bought was Bitcoin. I bought it around about $1,200 in order to buy altcoins. And I have been buying Bitcoin at various stages, at $3,000, $5,000, $10,000, even $17,000. So I would say my average buy price is about $6,000 all in. So as you can see, I've already made a relatively decent gain on that. And this is just my wealth, this is my wealth preservation side of my portfolio. This is the amount of Bitcoins I'm never ever going to sell. I am going to be keeping, and that is why it constitutes 15% of my portfolio, because obviously during this bear market, it has gone up. And because I've got such a sizable amount, that amount going up, even if it goes up a thousand, my portfolio goes up a hell of a lot. So that's why. So it's not that I'm not playing the high risk game, because my bias is to play high risk. I always take risks. How I've made money in crypto, how I even have 15% in Bitcoin is because of high risk altcoins. The first altcoin that I invested in was Ripple. That made a 40x. The second altcoin that I did a ma major investment uh, with, was I put $20,000 into a cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. So that did a 300x. And they were very, very high risk plays at the time. So high risk is how I play it. However, I do have my pot. I don't want to fuck up. So I don't want to be one day everything goes to pot, that Bitcoin, my Bitcoin holdings will be the least to suffer. Next up, my second biggest position in cryptocurrency is in Hedera Hashgraph, which is a layer one directed acyclic graph technology. It was the first DAG that ever came out in cryptocurrency and arguably my largest investment that I have ever made in an ICO, uh, which turned out actually to be a bit of a loss. So, Hedera did go up to right about two dollars. No, it went up to about 50, 60 cents in the last bull market. I was expecting it to go to at least two dollars. It never quite reached that. My buy-in price was twelve cents. Presently, it is less than twelve cents. I bought this at IDO. It was obviously overvalued at IDO, but I have a lot of conviction in Hedera. I think that it has not yet had its time. And as a result, I think it's got potential in the next bull market, even though it's a mid-risk coin to make this a 42x for me when I bought in and a 57x from today's price. Wish there was a quicker way in which I could do this. The third one is Chainlink. I invested in Chainlink in 2019 and 2020. I invested a bit in 2019 and I invested the lion's share during the... COVID crash in 2020, which if we're going on the four year cycles, we're yet to have that blow off bottom event. Hence why I believe in a recession. But anyway, I, I bought into Chainlink then at $1.50. That was my buy price, my major buy price. And Chainlink to me still sits as one of the major assets in cryptocurrency and one that I'm going to hold. I did sell some of it during the bull run. Um, therefore, it's 7% of my portfolio currently, but I believe that this is going to have a better run than it did last time. I think if we had a proper euphoria last time, this would have gone well over $100. It only went to $50 last time. I think this time, because it's part of DeFi and 
the uh, real world assets narrative. I think it's going to have a better run next time. So that's staying in my portfolio. And I personally think that's going to make a ginormous multiplier for me uh, in the next bull run. Next up, Cardano. I love Cardano, always have. It's one of the first cryptocurrencies I really fell in love with. And to me, it still maintains its position as one of the strongest assets in, you know, kind of like the top 10 cryptos. I would say it's one that's probably had the least fanfare lately during this latest pump. We've seen Solana, we've seen Avalanche, but don't discount Cardano. In my personal opinion, it does boast superior technology. The smart contracts really was a small part of its run in the last bull market. And I think that next time, Cardano is going to do even better. My major buy price of Cardano was about three cents. I bought some also at 1.9 cents and I bought some at seven cents. So my my I would say my average buy price is about three cents. I did sell about three quarters of my Cardano into stable coins during the the come down of Cardano. Um, so I will probably just stick with what I've got. I don't think I'm going to be adding to Cardano. I used to have over a million Cardano. Now I have uh, well. I've already said three quarters, three quarters less than I used to have. But I maintain that I think that Cardano, I think this is going to be a $12 cryptocurrency in the next bull market, which would mark a 400x return for me overall. Ascend X. This is an exchange. This is presently a very high risk cryptocurrency. I invested in this in 2019, the same time I invested in Matic. And the thing is, is that you can't sell it, right? So I bought it, but... Um, like 95% of it was locked for the last bull run. So I was able to sell 5% of it for 300x. When it did a 300x, it went from one cent to $3.20. But a lot of my money is still tied up. They essentially have a mining, a transaction mining process, which is what releases more Sendex. So I've got no choice but to hold this. So if I actually had a choice, there would be none of this in my portfolio. But... Um, I've had to hold it, and I will continue, I suppose, to hold it. Next up, we have got Phantom. I invested in this ICO, which was, um, this was the price at ICO. And this is a, this has ended up doing decent multipliers for me, I would say. But again, I think that this is going to, um, I don't think it really had a good blow off top in the last bull run. And I think that $10 is where I could see it going, which from my you know, buy price would be a mega multiplier, but from today, not a huge amount. But I still maintain that this is a relatively mid-risk cryptocurrency to go into, and it comprises 4.7% of my portfolio. I didn't sell much of this, actually, in the last bull run. Next, we've got Stratos, which is my decentralized storage and computing Play for the next bull market. Now, this was very, very new in the last bull market. So in my opinion, this has not really had much of a hype cycle. But it's still not going into the next bull market as its first hype cycle. So this is a cryptocurrency that has very, very recently uh, gone on actually to be $1.23. I should have updated that. But um, this is, instead of going for something like Internet Computer, Filecoin, Arweave, which are more like blue chip or mid-risk uh, mid -risk plays, I'm going for a very, very high risk play. Stratus is already showing a lot of promise. They've partnered up with BitTow, uh, Bitensor, and they've, uh, they've also part of NVIDIA, uh, a partnership with them. So they are quite clearly, they're excellent at marketing. They've got a great brand, which they're growing. And if you are looking for something that is is going to make more multipliers than something like ICP or Filecoin. Stratos, I think, is it. Um, may not necessarily make the best of gains from where it is right now, but I do think it's going to come down a bit and that you'll be able to make better gains later. Um, and I think 15 is a very conservative price. It did hit 6 as a top in the last bull market. Went from my buy price, which was ICO, which was 13.5 cents, went to $6. That was a very good gain. And I sold quite a bit of it in that during that gain. But I also held some because I don't believe 6 is the, the top for it. And I do believe it could probably go higher. And with the amount of fanfare being made for ICP right now, and the likes of a cash network and our weave, that I think that because this is the smallest, this is the riskiest play in decentralized storage, that this one has got a very, very good chance of making better multipliers than all of those. 
Then I've got Ethereum. Again, been buying Ethereum for many, many years. My average buy price is about $300. It constitutes only 2.5% of my portfolio, largely because I bought an NFT that cost 100 Ethereum in the last bull market, and I never sold it. So as a result of that, that 100 Ethereum, which was a ginormous amount of Ethereum, um, you know, that, that, that went. So therefore, uh, I haven't got a large amount of Ethereum, 2.5%, which is still a decent amount, but... Not as much as I probably would like for an Ethereum ETF. But I still think this is one to hold. VeChain, again, this is not exactly a sexy play. VeChain is kind of looked at as supply chain blockchain. Uh, it, the Revolutionizing supply chain. And the guy who created VeChain was formerly a senior executive at Louis Vuitton. So he knows all about, you know, working for a top, a top brand. And so he's taken this expertise, turned VeChain into a first class grade A blockchain that I believe, again, it's going to do okay. Um, I don't have a huge amount of conviction with it. I think it's going to make multipliers, but I don't think it's necessarily sexy when you look at what's been coming out today. But I still hold it because I've got a massive node on the VTOR network that is generating passive income for me. Next up, I've got X Money. X Money was formerly U Trust. This one tends to do quite well at the end of a bull market. This went to one dollar eighty in its first bull market. Went to ninety five cents in its last bull market, and uh, and I think this is also going to probably do a relatively decent multiply. Go up to probably a dollar, maybe even more. I think that these guys have got way more partnerships, way more adoption than they've ever had. Probably the strongest they've ever been. But it's not a new cryptocurrency. And there are always newer cryptocurrencies. So, But this one remains in my portfolio. I've sold, I would say, two-thirds of it so far. But um, I still hold quite a bit for probably because I anticipate that this hasn't yet had its... I don't think it's necessarily realized it's top price yeah next to the heroes i invested in this in the last bull market um this was probably 0.05 of my portfolio but because it had a recent massive surge then it has uh, ended up being a more predominant part of my portfolio and i think this is one that's going to really really shoot up in the bull market because gaming has got a massive use case this Silas Heroes itself is going to be basically three games. They're, they're games developers. They've got three games. So it makes it a little bit like Gala in that respect. It's, it's not just a single title game. They're hedging it with three titles so far and a launch pad, which is the Sidus launch pad. So this is also a launch pad play two, in which case I think this is going to soar in the next ball market and make massive multipliers even from here. Next up, we have got Shiba Inu. Now, Shiba Inu is a legacy meme coin play. I loved Shiba Inu in the last bull market. Made me very good money in the last bull market. And I maintain a position for the next bull market. I believe it's going to surpass its old all its old all-time high in the next bull market. But I don't think it's got anywhere near explosive gains compared to other meme coins. Uh, you know, in its kind of grouping. But it's probably the one that will still get the lion's share of. You know, adoption is, 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 it's in this bull run, the next bull run is going to be what Doge was in the last bull run, in my opinion. So that is why I think it's still got decent potential in the next bull run. Next, we've got VLaunch. I invested in this at the latter end of the last bull market. It's a launch pad. It's run by MM Crypto and has quite a few YouTubers that are involved in it. Uh, I wouldn't say they've necessarily had the best of launches, the best of projects. Um, their latest one, I don't think, made a massive multiplier, but we're not in a bull market. So I think that this, as a token, could do very well. And I think that what they launch could probably do very well in a bull market. Next, we have got MetaVPad. MetaVPad, again, I invested in this in 2021. This made my, arguably, my biggest multiplier ever, which was 1260x. And... It constitutes a relatively decent side of my size of my portfolio. It's a very high risk play. It's a launch pad. It's really concentrated on metaverse projects and gaming, but also AI because they helped launch AI pad. So it's kind of a little bit like Seedify in that area. It concentrates on launches in probably the 
biggest narratives in cryptocurrency. So I believe this one's going to probably not get as high as its last all-time high because it's more in circulation. It was a much smaller circulating supply when it got to $1.26 beforehand. But I think this is still a major play. It's done incredibly well, even in a bear market. And even, you know, in a bear market is a really bad time for launch pads. So I think this is still you know, going to do exceptionally. I think it's going to do really well in the next bull market. Next up, we've got Castor. Castor, I have very, very little conviction in. This is a payments platform that I invested in in the last bull market. Um, it's a Carl the Moon project. And I would say I've broken even with this. I have, I sold pretty much, I would say, I would say three quarters of this I've already sold. And I've got, you know, only a quarter left. That shows you how much I actually invested in it. I don't necessarily think it's going to do insanely well. So this will be one that I will, I, I'll, I won't say any more at this stage, but um, that's still in my portfolio. Neo Tokyo, this one is something that I generated through having a Neo Tokyo NFT. Basically, I, had an, I have an NFT that was generating five bytes a day for me, which I had running for two years, and that generated a hell of a lot of bytes um, to the point that it uh, constitutes 0. 0.6 of my portfolio. And I think this is going to go up to $200, if, if not potentially more, just simply because gaming projects will all scramble to be part of Neo Tokyo so that they get kind of like the marketing of being part of Alex Becker's project. Alex Becker probably tweeting about it. And so that will make the demand for Neo Tokyo coins to go up. So I would say 200 is around about where I see it going, which would be a decent return on investment. Um, 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 um. Next is Matic. Matic is a legacy play. I bought Matic. Uh, basically in 2019, and I rode it all the way pretty much to uh, 1000x. I interrupted that play by selling it at about 5 cents and rebuying at 9 cents when they turned into Polygon. Um, but I still hold some. I still hold some. I sold most of it because obviously it went from a quarter of a cent to $3. If you held the whole lot through that, you're nuts. And by the way, before I move any further, very, very important to say, as usual, nothing I say is to be construed as financial advice. Crypto is largely unregulated and high risk and people who invest should be prepared to lose all their money. And everything I see to you in this video is for informational and educational purposes only. As so yes, there we are. Got that one out of the way. So um, yeah, so I still have Matic because I think Matic has got the potential to go up to 15 maybe $20 in the next bull market. Not a huge multiplier. It's a blue chip. You can't really expect a lot from Matic. But it's a relatively, relatively safe-ish play because these guys could be part of an ETF in the next bull market. Next, you've got GameZone. This is a gaming-based launch pad. Very, very high-risk cryptocurrency play. And it is not in its full first bull market either. But this is Bluezilla's main gaming launch pad. So I believe this could go back up to $1 in the next bull market, which would represent about 30x from here, 200x from when I got in. Um... Yeah, these guys went up to about $1.20, $1.50 in the last bull market. I think it will exceed that, just simply because I imagine the pipeline for games will be large for Bluezilla to manage, and they'll probably come out with some good games in the bull market. Next run is Cryo War. This is a uh, massive multiplayer game on Solana. I invested in the last bull market, sold a lot in the last bull market, as much as I was able to, because my money was mainly vested. So what was unvested, I sold at $4.00. So I bought it under a cent, sold it at four dollars, made a huge multiplier. Um, but but having seen how Cryo War has done since the gaming trend, this obviously has a lot of life left in it. And this was virtually nothing in my portfolio, and very recently just exploded back into being a five-figure cryptocurrency. So I think that that bodes well for when an actual bull market comes along. Next, we've got BSC Pad. So this is Bluezilla's main launch pad. Pretty much every token that Bluezilla brings out launches on BSC pad. Present price is way lower than I bought it for. I bought it for 69 cents. Ha ha ha. And uh, was a platinum holder of it. Um, so that if you were a platinum, you basically got 
private sale allocation. You got a private sale price and a private sale allocation. That was very useful when I got Tronpad, which was a 400x. I was able to make $30,000 in a day through having that um, that platinum, uh, well, blue diamond tier. So therefore, it remains in here. I sold off a lot of it at about $3.00. Uh, towards the end of the last bull market, but I still hold enough for um, at least platinum, if not diamond. I, no, I think it's about platinum what I hold. And then the rest... So I'm not going to go, because it's going to take ages if I go through all of them singularly. So I'm just going to basically reveal um, what constitutes most of my... Port the, the rest of my legacy play. So about 6% is what constitutes the rest of them. Adapad, Victoria VR, Paid Network, EVEPAD, VELASPAD, UFO Gaming, Stella, Star Atlas DAO, which is um, Polis, Senate, ScarQuest, which was previously Valhalla, which was a, a VELAS-based game, PulsePad, NFT Launch, MetaStrike, MetaGods, MetaDarby, Katana Inu, uh, Galactic Quadrant, Eve, uh, Eartha, Cryptopolis, Cryo War, Chain Guardians, Bullyverse. So these all constitute around about 6%, the remaining 6% of my legacy portfolio. So before I move on to the rest, let me just um, uh, make sure I don't I don't miss out on any super chats that you guys are sending me, because I am not in any way, shape, or form an unappreciative person. So thank you very much, Enantial. Up in the sky, Supo, make sure to do a flyby of Titan X. It'll make a great port a great addition to the Supo Heroes portfolio. Thank you very much. Titan X, I think, is in that class of Zen and Hex that have super duper potential that you can't see right now. But when a bull market comes along, inflation matters much less, and people jump into these coins if they are simple. And as long as they are relatively focused on their marketing which in the last bull market, Hex was, hence why it made a 10,000x. But Zen, not as focused, but maybe it will be during the bull market. And Titan, similar. I think a lot of people have migrated. So uh, thank you very much, Enantial. Love the name, actually. And then Britcoin, thank you very much for the uh, 199. Happy New Year to you too. Happy New Year, all of you, by the by. Right, next we're going to move on to my new portfolio, okay? This is this is going to be one that you will recognise a little bit better. The, the coins will be more current, more relevant, more pumpable, overall more exciting, okay? And uh, these have been ones that I have been accumulating over the bear market, been buying in DCA chunks, and some I've taken decent positions in, some I didn't take su such good positions in. Now, overall... Now, I should have said this at the beginning. With regards to the position sizes I've got in my portfolio, this is excluding stables. So this is this is my portfolio if I took out all stables, all right? So stable coins are not in this portfolio at all. If I was to look at the sum total of my stables versus the sum total of my legacy and new portfolio, so my entire portfolio, I would say I'm still, <laughs> I'd say I'm 50-50. I'd say I've got 50% in stables, or maybe about about 45% in stables. Um, so therefore, a lot of money burning a hole in my pocket. But I'm gonna be telling you more, very, very soon, what I'm gonna do with these stables. So make sure that you watch on, because this is that is almost as important as showing you the um, new portfolio. So as you'll know, Solana, I bought this at $9.91. I was hoping this would fall further, Vitalik, Booterin made a tweet the day after I bought it at 9.91. It went down to $8.14. Vitalik Buterin made a tweet and he said, my personal perspective is Solana is still an excellent uh, ecosystem and smart contract platform. And then all of a sudden it blew up again. Thank you very much Vitalik for ruining my optimal buy price and a bigger position. Having said that, wow. This has already made a 10x since I invested in it. Thus, I believe that the bottom's gone for this one, unfortunately. Um, I would have liked to have made a $100,000 investment in this, but it was uh, a fraction of that. But still makes a decent size of my portfolio, a, thir a, a third of my Bitcoin size. So that's quite large, actually. And that shows you that I was accumulating this a lot during the crash of FTX. And when Solana went down... 
know, Solana had been around about $30, $40. I said, I'm not buying. I'm not buying unless this gets close to 10 It got to 10 I did my buying. Um, I wish I bought more, but there we are. Never mind. But Solana, love it. And it's a big part of my portfolio. And I personally believe this could go up to about $1,200 in the next bull market. It's already $100. So it only needs to make a 12x from there. But this would this would constitute a 121x from, which is what I said, which is why $10 was my initial optimal buy price for Solana. Because I believe that was 100x from there. And there is a 100x, I believe, from that point. From now, probably not so much. But I do believe that Solana could be part of an ETF. Next is AIT Protocol. Now, AIT Protocol is a very new cryptocurrency. This is one that I invested in only a month ago. Now, AIT Protocol, I would say that these guys are really what I am looking for in terms of investing in new projects. So if you saw my tweet two days ago where I said that 2024, I believe, is going to be the best time to invest in new projects, new platforms, the ones that are actually doing the narrative in the most modern way. AI is a bu super bullish narrative, okay? It's going to be huge in the next bull market, in my personal opinion. But getting into legacy ones like Fetch, Singularity, I mean, there's not much in the way of choice. But AIT Protocol came out very recently. AIT Protocol, I see very similar in the same kind of vein as I saw Bitensor. So Bitensor is kind of like the Bitcoin of AI, where they leverage all of the participate, all the participants in the network, all of their compute, all of their their neural networking power that they provide to the platform, they therefore create a massive decentralized neural network. AIT protocol is pretty much exactly the same. What these guys do is they utilize and leverage uh, essentially all users participating within AIT protocol's train to earn program. So they've got a train to earn scheme where humans teach AI models how to process data, how to annotate data, and essentially creating AI virtual assistants, AI tools, AI workforce, basically. So humans get paid to teach. So if you get take part in Train to Earn, you earn money training these AI models, which therefore can be used to automate society. Incredible. Incredible value proposition. So this one I invested in uh, at private sale uh, at 1.5 cents. It's already made a decent run up since then. But these guys are making, really, they're making kind of, of, of partnership after partnership. They were incubated by PAL, P-A-A-L, which was one of the big gainers in the, one of the big AI gainers in this bear market. And, um, and so this comes out as a... A project that's got an incredible amount of potential out of what was a very, very good project in PAL. So these guys, they're already showing um, how it works, how you get involved, how uh, you can get involved in answering questions, validating, uh, validating data, and earning rewards on the platform, which therefore teaches their AI models and therefore creates a decentralized labor workforce. I, as I said, I put this in the same vein as kind of Bitensor. Um, but not many people know about it at this stage. Volume's still very low. I call it high risk because even though it's it's, it's gone up quite sizably, um, this is very new still and could become a major player. So I am predicting this to go about $5, which would be about 333x from where I bought it. This isn't necessarily to say you should get into it, but this is to say that you do need to get into early cryptocurrencies. I let everybody know in my um, DCA group that I got into AIT. Uh, anyway, moving on. Avalanche is my third biggest play. I am very, very fortunate that I believe that the buy price, and if you were in my DCA group, you would have seen I did a lot of Avalanche buying, that the Avalanche price was just too good to be true. Under $10, oh, I loved it. I just kept buying it, and I bought it at the best price of 870 and I think it actually went down to 860 in the end so I was very very close to if that was the bottom basically and it's now about $41 has gone up to about nearly $50 and I believe that this uh, along with Solana is kind of like the, the the kind of modern play of a high performance blockchain fourth generation blockchain ones that do ultra fast transactions per second with a very very low transaction cost this is like the Ethereum this is within the Ethereum killers kind of list so I don't necessarily think it's going to make the biggest multipliers 
nowadays, but I do think this is made, this will make a very, very good multiplier from the point at which I got in at. And I think it's going to make a bigger all-time high than the last bull market. And the only times that really happens is when you have an elite cryptocurrency. So Solana, I believe, I mean, it's only it's nearly halfway there to being its last all-time high. Uh, so I think it's going to smash its last all-time high. And it's going to essentially get to Ethereum's all-time high of 2017, which is about $1,200. And Avalanche, I think, will 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 surpass Solana's old all time high by two x. And uh, I just I just believe this is an incredible ecosystem. And in my opinion, Avalanche is my favorite ecosystem of all the ecosystems. Actually, next up we have got AI Pad. This is a ginormous part of my portfolio. I bought a lot of AI Pad and I've sold none of it. I really love AI Pad. AI Pad is a launch pad for AI-based cryptocurrency. So if you are wanting to get into the likes of an AIT protocol, essentially a very, very good project and it's as, at its lowest price and its earliest opportunity, you need to have a position in something like AIPAD because AIPAD will just grant you the ability to get into these AI projects. They've got two coming up. They have got, well, they've got They've got Zybot, which is going to be coming out very, very shortly. And this was an AI pad project. And Vapor Wallet as well. So AI pad is definitely going to be hosting Bluezilla's newer launches and AI launches too. So I think this is going to be a mega multiplier. For me, a 263x. I, of course, have been talking about AI pad since it was much lower in price. And yeah, I think this is going to be a, a big hit in the next bull market. I might be slightly conservative. I don't know. But. I would say that a fairly safe price is about five dollars for AI Pad from where it is now. When I first spoke about AI Pad, where it was about five cents, then it had hundred x potential. But it's since gone up since I've spoken about it quite a lot. I'm not saying it went up just because of me, but you know I did certainly talk about it when it was a a one hundred x opportunity. Profit bots is my next one. I sold quite a lot of my profit bots actually. This was uh, actually quite a big part of my uh, portfolio at one point. Um, I bought it for 19 cents. I sold quite a bit of it at $11, I want to say, $11, $11.50. Um, but I retain enough to have God Mode. Okay, so I retain enough to actually be able to use the signals, the God Mode signals. A God Mode signal came out just the other day that was that ended up making a 5,000x for anybody who got in. So they could have turned you know, like, like a quarter of an Ethereum into over 100 ethereum that's insane that shows you just how powerful profit bots is very very high quality use of ai too so it's an ai play as well as a telegram bot play um and i've kept a lot uh, not a lot but i've kept enough so that there's enough to sell later but also enough to actually utilize the platform too but this did a 70x for me in a bear market and again i brought it to you before it launched so a lot, I, I know a lot of you did actually manage to get into this, which was uh, heartwarming. Next up, near protocol. Only a couple of weeks ago, where people say to me, "See, boy, should I sell my near? It's not doing anything. It's not doing anything." I'm like, "Cool your jets. Everything catches up. Not everything goes up equally." You know, some of the more exciting things, they get taken up with the flood. So then you get Solana, you've got Avalanche, you've got gaming, you've got some meme coins that were in Solana and Avalanche. And then maybe some of the ones that were, I suppose, maybe legacy cryptocurrencies, because this one isn't new to a bull market. They take a little bit of time. It doesn't go up equally, but it does go up. So you just have to wait. And it did. It went up over $4. And its current price is about $3.90. And uh, my buy price, again, if you were in the Mastermind group, you would have seen I got it under a dollar. Mwah! Mwah! I think this one's going to do beautifully in the next bull market. $80 is what I've got as uh, as the highest bull price, which is about 81x. Next up, we have got and, and Nier. The thing is, with something like Nier, is, is that the reason it takes a while is, is, is because it may not necessarily be front of narrative. Because you don't automatically think of near. It's not one of the elite coins. It's not a blue chip. It's a mid-risk. So it takes a little bit of time to get that osmosis. So what I mean by osmosis is you get the major coins doing well. And then what is the next tier? Mid-risk. And then they start going up. And then what's the tier under that? The higher risk. Then they start going up. But you just have to wait a little bit. But near, they're a very, very fast blockchain. 
arguably in the same kind of ilk as Solana. 100,000 transactions per second, sharded blockchain, proof of stake, very, very quick, not got much of an ecosystem at this point. And that's why I think there's so much potential still for near moving forward. So 80 could be conservative. I don't know. But um, I mean, it could go up to $200. Who knows? You literally don't know. You What you do is you invest as low as possible and you wait to be surprised. And you typically do get surprised in a bull market because then you get, you know, you get additional listings, you get um, incredible adoption. Maybe there are some ecosystem incentives. You know, they've got like, let's say, 100 million to spend on near uh, near based development and then all of a sudden bang you get it going into kind of Solana growth phase so that's what you do you just you you see there's something that's got potential you invest as low as possible you just wait don't expect something to just go up straight away because it more than likely you will get burned doing that next up we have got moonbeam i would love more moonbeam i'm not gonna lie would love more moonbeam um, Moonbeam is a layer one multi-chain protocol. What that means is, is, is that if you are developing a dApp, you develop normally, if you develop for like Solana, for Avalanche, you're developing just for them. All right. Then you need to write a completely different, different code to get that dApp working on another blockchain. With Moonbeam, what you've got is you've got this interconnectivity that enables you to be able to make the same app for Moonbeam as you can then make for Ethereum. And then you can still make it for, let's say, Near, Elrond, Sui, Aptos, all the other blockchains, right? You can just port it. Instead of having to rewrite the code, rewrite it in the language for that particular blockchain, you just port it over. And that is, in my opinion, one of the most revolutionary apps, uh, one of the most revolutionary um, smart contract ecosystems that exist in cryptocurrency that, in my opinion, is extremely undervalued, is extremely misunderstood, and hardly anybody talks about, right? But I believe that this is going to do very, very well in the next bull market. And I think this will actually go beyond $10. $10 could be a conservative uh, top price target. <laughs> next up, we have got Moon River. And Moon River, again, I was taking positions in both. I'm more bullish on Moonbeam because Moonbeam is on the Polkadot network and Moon River is on the Kusama network, which is basically Polkadot sister chain. And it is the test net for Moonbeam. So they tend to deploy things on Moon River, make sure it works, make sure it's fine. And if it works, then they put it on Moonbeam and it's all ready to go on Moonbeam. Now, Moon River, because it was such a small market cap, went well under $50 million, uh, considering this went over a billion dollars in the last bull market. It was so supremely suppressed. This shut up. And I invested in this at $3.83 on Binance. And um, I'm surprised it's only 1% of my portfolio, if I'm honest with you. But uh, that's probably because I didn't take as big a position in Moon River. I thought it was going to go down um, to $3. But... Um, this has shown that this has got potential in the next bull market. People obviously love it. Uh, Moonbeam will more than likely take this up as well. With Polkadot 2.0 coming up in the next bull market, it will undoubtedly have an osmosis effect on Moon River. What I mean by osmosis is it's just the natural um, speculation and greed going into um, something related to it. So because Moonbeam is very, very close to Moon River, people will see Moonbeams going up and then they'll probably go into Moon River because that's got more potential for multipliers. So that's why Moon River, I took a position in Moon River also. And also, I just love the name. I love the, I love the song, Moon River. What a beauty. Right, next. This is uh, um, one, of, one of the first that is uh, a new cryptocurrency that has not yet got price discovery yet. Because it's not out yet. Manta Network. I've invested a lot of money into this at private sale. And they are already showing incredible promise. They've already got more TVL than a lot of, in fact, 99% of most chains. They've got more TVL. They, these guys are booming. The marketing is on point. I've seen Manta Network ad nauseum through all sorts of different influences on YouTube and Twitter. This one's going to fly. This is going to fly. And the amount of people following them on, on Twitter, like they are outpacing Arbitrum and Optimism by about 10x in terms of momentum and marketing progress. 
So then Manta Network's going to be massive. I put 0.9 because because if I look at you know what 1% is, then I know I invested um, around about this much into it. Um, and that is my kind of allocation size. But I don't know what that will end up being, but I imagine it'll be a humongous multiplier. But Mandra, if you didn't know, it's basically a new layer two. It's a new layer two, and they are powered... Well, they have, have already started being powered by Celestia, which makes Ethereum so much cheaper. So Celestia only really works with other technology. They've created a modular blockchain that isn't exactly working on its own. They don't have transactions per second, transaction costs. You kind of you kind of mix it with a, a layer two. You mix it with a roll-up, and that makes it faster. And so, therefore, Manta is going to be such a... a, a, a it should be such a superb underpinning technology for Ethereum scaling. And being a ZK roll-up technology as well, when the EIP4844 comes out, this will be even faster than it is right now. And it's already and it's already working quite nicely. So Manta Network this is gonna be a massive yeah, it's gonna be a, a massive multiplier. And uh, the hype is so huge, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going in day one. I would recommend Letting this surge and then going down. You know, because what will happen is people will get airdrops. People will sell the shit out of it. So don't get it initially. Wait. This will be a good long-term play, in my opinion. Next up is Easy. I love the look of Easy. Right? So Easy is a gamble fi stroke real-world assets narrative. So this isn't out yet. But this is what the Easy platform looks like. And it's essentially a, a carbon copy of... Roll bit in terms of how it looks, but is revolutionary in terms of how it works. It works different to roll, but it's not your typical gamble fi. It's not your typical real world asset cryptocurrency. What you do is you get raffles, and with these raffles, which cost like let's say three dollars, you could win one of these big NFTs. So it's a safe and fun way to be able to win these really highly valued NFTs at virtually no price at all. Actually, no price at all. I think it's gonna be. Yeah, you know, I think it's got, it's got potential to be really big. But what I really like is the real world asset side of it because I want exposure to real world assets. I haven't taken, I haven't taken much of a position in real world asset cryptocurrencies as of yet. Like Centrifuge, Relio, um, what's another one? Well, those are the main ones, as well as Chainlink. Chainlink, I've probably got my is probably my main exposure so far real world assets but what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to use a raffle to own either whole wholly or part of a an, a, a real world um asset such as <laughs> the mona lisa a hublot mon home in los angeles mon home in greece that kind of thing all right it's not out yet but i imagine this is going to be uh, a biggie and um there's already got some investors of note in it and uh, I think this one's gonna gonna do relatively well from my buy-in price, a hundred x, I would say, but probably even better than that. So I would definitely look out for this one when it comes out. You know already what the IDO price is, so you need to try and get this as close to that as possible. And the chances are this isn't hype like Manta Network. You know, you there's not gonna be all and sundry influencers talking about this this should be released relatively silently and go up massive during gamble five stroke real world assets next we have got mix mob mix mob is this really really interesting solana gaming play now anatoly um yakovenko who's the i probably butchered his name who's the ceo of solana has played this game he's actually streamed this game called mixbots and it's a very very interesting concept so what you've got with mixbots i'll put the sound down is you've got a you've got a game that's been thought has been reimagined from the ground up so what happens is the story behind mixmob is is what would happen if ai Removed every computer game in the world. How would you rebuild the video games industry? That's what Mixmob is. So let me just show you.
So these are the NFTs, these robots. You race them and you win and you use cards as a kind of betting system as well. It's got Arthur Hayes in it, and like I said, the CEO of Solana has played it. So that, to me, is saying that there's kind of likely to be an endorsement of MixMob. So MixMob, it's a new cryptocurrency, and I've taken a relatively largest position in it because I, I, I can't be bothered to look at what's existing, what's out, what's pumped. If you didn't get in at the beginning of a pump of a Solana coin... And there's, there's quite a few that have you know, done relatively well. Obviously, I'm in you know, Star Atlas and um, Cryo War. But there have been other games released on Solana that I wasn't able to be part of. And instead of chasing what's already gone up, I'll just go what hasn't even pumped yet. So you go for the small games. And I'll show you in a minute um, a, a very, very good platform to be able to do this. But yeah, Mixed Mob, I've taken a decent position and I think this should do extremely well. And then next up, we have got Ape Terminal. Ape Terminal, this may sound like a really weird name to you, but Ape Terminal, I think, is possibly the best launch pad. Um, sorry, Blue Zilla, but I think it's probably going to be the best launch pad the, for, of the next bull market. Let me just show you. So Ape Terminal hasn't, hasn't actually released a token yet, but Ape Terminal is has already performed really well as a launch pad. So you can actually, although there is no token, you can partake in launches. And the launches that they have had have been exceptional so far. So they have had um, AIT Protocol. That's done very, very well. Artifact did quite well. And Inspect did well. So their, their first three launches have done superbly. And I can only imagine that moving into the next bull market, these guys are going to have some incredible, um, incredible launches. Because I've already seen that some of my VC friends are talking about games and cryptocurrency projects that are earmarked to go on Ape Terminal. So Ape Terminal, from what I can gather, has had quite a few uh, crypto influencers have already gone into Ape Terminal. And I think it's going to fly. And I think this is going to boast a lot of the really good launches. Because if you've been watching me throughout the last kind of few months, you would have seen that Star Launchers shut up. Um, a lot of the Bluezilla pads have shot up. Sweep had a, a Aptos launch. They've all gone up. And one of the best performers has been Seedify. That's gone from 50 cents to near $5. And although they are concentrating on kind of games, AI and, and, and metaverse, it's already gone. It's like it's already kind of gone as far as the opportunity is concerned. So for me, I'm looking for a launch pad I get in from the ground up. And Ape Terminal is one of them. I imagine that Ape Terminal are going to launch their own coin on Ape Terminal. So make sure that you kind of follow Ape Terminal if you want to be in on Ape Terminal. But I, just, I I didn't like the name at first, but I heard somebody said to... I heard about Ape Terminal from three different people, and I said, the name's garbage, pass. But having seen the the whole picture, love it. Actually love it. And uh, it's not just a launch pad. It's also, uh, it's also meant to be, you know, kind of good for DeFi as well. Like, the launch pad is part of it, but... It's a it's a yield generating tool. So they've got all of these various different bits of functionality. MEV tech, which is basically extractable value. So they try to get as much extractable value from all of the assets within their ecosystem for the end user and therefore generate decent yield. So yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about that now because it sounds sounds a little bit creepy. Right, next we have got Corpo Games. Already spoken about this one, so I won't spend too long on this. Still waiting for this to come out. I invested in this actually in 2021. Still waiting for this to come out. This is going to be an Arcadia of games. They've got three games. They have got Citizen Conflict. They've got Egos, 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 which is like a Squid Games, a Fall Guys esque egg game where you have to go through a obstacle course, and then they've got Animate, which is a kind of NFT story mode game. 
And yeah, so they already look like they've got the openings of uh, a very exciting kind of game studio. So they were initially going to come out as a single title game, but they decided to expand upon the vision and become a game studio, become like Gala kind of thing. So I I expect this is going to do really, really well when it comes out. So that's it, I believe, of all the coins that are not yet out. But looking at how uh, AIT protocol has gone, I think that is... If you, if you happen to be somebody who hasn't deployed a lot of your stables during this bear market, you're waiting for prices to come down, a good use of that is new projects. A good use of that is getting into new launches and that being your way of making the multipliers. Next up, we have got Everdome. Everdome is a metaverse play that I'm not yet ready to let go of. Okay, so it's it has come right back down to its IDA price. I sold a little bit when it 100 x It went from 0.001 to 10 cents. It 100 x I sold a bit and kept the lion share, mainly because when it did 100 x I only had my first 10% of tokens. But now I've got the, the remaining 90%, and I'm not ready to get rid of this. Even though I wouldn't be making a loss getting rid of it now, even though it's under ICO price, even though I wouldn't be making a loss, I'm not prepared to let go of it because I've looked at the screenshots. This looks like it's really, really being built out to be a high-quality metaverse. So Decentraland did nothing for a long, long time until Facebook rebranded to Meta, and then all of a sudden Decentraland shot the fuck up, right? And the reason why is just because a trend took it up. Now, next time... Decentraland is already kind of like a, a kind of uh, mid risk, kind of like blue chip in terms of like in terms of metaverse plays. It's like the Bitcoin. So if you're looking for a very very high risk version in the metaverse, waiting for that trend to pop off, which it hasn't really done yet, then Everdome I think is, is going to do very very well. So I'm waiting for this one. I think this one could maybe I've been slightly optimistic, putting a um, fifteen cents so over its um, previous all-time high but this one came out in january 2022 it did 100x at the beginning of a bear market so it's not had a bull market yet so it's already been brought down to its basically it's its first ever price and lower than its first ever price so i think this could make a massive multiplier later you have to wait for the metaverse um trend just like you have to wait for gaming like, I had to wait two years for a gaming trend to take all of these gaming coins I'd bought in 2022 up. Sinus Heroes had been a loss maker for, for two years before a gaming trend came. you just got to wait for the meta trend, which will come, because the metaverse is already expanding. You've already got the, what is it, the Apple uh, Explorer Pro, or whatever it's called, the, the, the VR set, which is basically taking you into Black Mirror-esque technology where you can just record everything in front of you. It's fucking insane. So Everdome is meant to be a kind of 4K ultra-realistic metaverse based in Mars. Um, so it's a space metaverse that you can build on, like you could with Decentraland. So I think the opportunity is still there for Everdome. I'm not willing to let go of this, because I think it's got explosive potential down the line. Next up, Pulse Chain. I put this as a high risk, even though by market cap it's actually a mid-risk. So Pulse Chain, I think, just purely because of the Richard Hart SEC drama, this this Pulse X Hex, uh, everything under it, have just been kind of they've not been able to to surge. They had their initial surge. Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X actually did very well initially when the Bitcoin ETF speculation started in late October. Like Pulse Chain and Hex actually did very very well. Pulse Chain like four or five X, just like that. And Pulse Chain also did about 3x or so. And um, it's come right back down. But there will be a point that Richard Hart has cleared. And Richard Hart, if he is if he is one thing, he is an expert at marketing. An absolute god at marketing. Like when the time is right, when the bull market is rife, you know, every big channel will want him on, on their... Uh, will want to feature him and will ask him questions. Or what do you think will be the top? Blah 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 blah. He's an expert marketer, and he's got incredible conviction and in, in behind his voice. So I just I just believe that, like with what happened with Hex in the last bull market, which I doubted, I got into Hex kind of about a hundred X too late. 
because I believe it was shit, and I thought Richard Hart was uh, it, un, uncredible, and, and he proved me wrong. And I believe a similar comeback is coming for Pulse Chain, and it's a relatively sizable part of my portfolio, and I do think it's got massive multipliers to come. People were saying, ooh, Pulse Chain to $1, Pulse Chain to $5, Pulse Chain to $10. No, that was never going to happen. Like, if you had any understanding of, of economics, that was never going to happen. But, no, but no, not five. I think is 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 very very doable, and that's virtually 100x from where it is right now. So I think the Pulse Chain will make a comeback, and it will have an ecosystem, and it's already got an ecosystem. It's got meme coins, it's got um, like uh, you know, some some shitty Pulse coins, and it's also got Teddy Bear, which is a a meme coin on Pulse Chain. They'll probably do very well. With Pulse Pulse Chain does well, so. Yeah, so I think the Pulse Chain will be due a resurgence, but you just need patience for this. There's going to be a whole 18-month window post-halving for Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain could do 100x in, like, a matter of a week. Just got to be willing to wait. Next, Algorand. Now, I've been disappointed with Algorand. I think that, uh, you know, I was expecting that this would have a similar rise to kind of Avalanche to Solana. It's basically in that same ilk of fast-performing blockchains that's got great partnerships, that's got CBDC potential, that's got digital currency potential. It's basically like, in my opinion, the legit XRP. Great uh, great cryptographic scientists behind it. But speculatively, it's not done brilliantly. It's only done a two and a bit X. Not amazing, to be fair. I would have expected better. But like with Hedera, I think it will just take a little bit of time for the money flow to seep into that that next layer, that tier two layer of of ETH killers. You've got the Solana Avalanche; they sit at the top, and then you've got kind of like the um, the Algorands, the Hedera's, uh, Internet Computers, all that lot sit kind of in the tier two, and the money will go into them. It's already started with Internet Computers, to be fair. Um, but I believe that Algorand, again, it's a question of patience. Just got to wait. I think the tokenomics are much better this time around. The last bull market, they were very, very inflationary tokenomics. That's what led to it not doing that great. Next time, a lot of its supply is already out. Next time, it should do much better as a layer one. But I think it just needs to market itself better. Next, we've got Star Launch. I took a big position in Star Launch. Uh, this is a Solana-based launch pad. And they are already showing signs of really good launches. Honeyland came out of Star Launch. And that's showing you. And also, so did um, Super Oracles. So this is showing you that Star Launch is, is actually got really good projects behind them. So it's not just Solana. It doesn't have to be just Solana. Super Oracles is a kind of multi-chain oracle. So that's not even a Solana-based cryptocurrency, yet they launched them. So... Um, I think Star Launch is very, very good. Very big part of my portfolio, actually. Not anywhere near as high as iPad, but enough to believe this can do very, very well. This I got into uh, mainly in the last bear, uh, um, last bull market, but I've also invested more now. And um, this went to $22 in the last bull market. Now, I'm not saying it's going to necessarily go to $22, but think how hot Solana has been already. Think about if Solana is part of the next ETF, okay? So you've already got Bitcoin um, and Ethereum with ETFs pending. Solana, there's no ETF pending yet. However, it's got the same adoption curve that Ethereum had, uh, has had. Um, it's doing extremely well. So imagine what a launch pad concentrating on all of the new launches and all the rock bottom priced coins coming out in the Solana ecosystem you can get into via Star Launch. So although I don't think it's going to go $22, I would not be surprised if it went to $5. Um, it could even go to $10. You just never know. Um, they have already got a decent pipeline, which is what I find very encouraging. So I think this can do very, very well, probably even better than I anticipate will do. And I'm not selling it till the end of the bull market. Simple as. Next, we have got Kadena. Kadena is a layer one proof of work blockchain that is fast transactions. Basically, it, it, in my opinion, should have done what Casper has done. 
Like it came down a lot. It was a $28 cryptocurrency in the last bull market that came down to 50 cents. It lost 56 X. And I said the optimal buy price be between 30 and 50 cents, I believe. No, I think I said 50, 50 to 80 cents was like an optimal range for Godena uh, around about a year and a half ago. And this went to 43 cents. So that's where I took my biggest position on Kadena. It's done okay, but I would have expected this to do a Casper. It's got it's way more established than Casper, but it's not new to a bull market like um hold on. I should be no. It's not new to a bull market like Casper is. So that therefore it had the explosive gains, the um obviously it had different technology with Block Dag and the team excellent and you know it, it had that it had that range for explosive growth that Kadena probably didn't have particularly because Kadena is on major exchanges already coins that are already on high liquidity exchanges don't really go up dramatically immediately anyway so i would say Kadena is one for the future this was this is rumored to be a 460,000 transaction per second network in, with the security of proof of work and also not being under the SEC jurisdiction of, of proof of stake blockchains that they don't like, uh, fear. So this could and should do very, very well in the next bull market. Could go back to its old all-time high, potentially higher. Potentially higher. I have to wait and see. Next up, Mina Protocol, the world's smallest blockchain. A blockchain that's the size of a tweet, 22 kilobytes. As most blockchains are in the gigabytes. So Mina has already got that kind of novelty factor. It has got great investors in it. It's got really good premier tier investors in it. And their focus is on decentralization rather than on speed and scalability. So with that in mind, they are looking to make a truly global decentralized network rather than something that could be highly centralized. Um, and, they're, and even though it's fast transactions per second, highly centralized. So I like the direction Mina Protocol are taking. They've done well since I bought in. I bought in at 37 cents. It's gone up to uh, 141. Uh, and that, I believe, it's not even, this bull run hasn't even started. So it's made a 4x. And I believe it's going to go further. $15, maybe $20. Once upon a time, I thought this coin could go up to about $50. That might be a bit much. But don't rule it out. It could happen. All depends on its adoption. All depends on its ecosystem. It all depends on how it, it manages the next bull market. That's what it comes down to. It's how well it optimizes on a bull market when it's there. And we're not in it yet. So it's, there's no point in, in prematurely... I'm not going to finish what I was going to say, but you know what I mean. There's no point in, 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 in getting it over with before it's even started. Like, wait till the right environment for bullishness, a sustained period of bullishness, then do the marketing. And I think that Mina will do very, very well in the future. Just simply because of its novelty value. All other blockchains are massive. This one's tiny. Therefore, the ability to be a node on it should be an incredible experience. Next, we have got Doge Chain. Doge Chain is a layer 2 for the Dogecoin ecosystem that enables for Dogecoin to have, a, to have meme coins, DeFi, gaming, all of that. So where you've got uh, Dogecoin, which is basically just a currency, you can have an whole ecosystem uh, that's tributized to Dogecoin via Doge Chain, And these guys are built on Polygon as well. So they are fast transactions for the Doge ecosystem, basically. Now, this is one that I have to say I'm a bit surprised by. We've had meme seasons. We've had three, you know, two and a half months of a pretty sizable pump. And this one's not really done much. But then again, neither has Doge. Doge chain is very closely correlated to Doge. So if Doge, which I imagine is going to do well in the bull market because of Elon Musk, does well, then Doge chain will go up with it. And as a result of that, I do predict this could be one of the big multipliers. This, this from here could still be 100x. It's not done a big multiplier, which means the opportunity is probably still there. Next, we have got... Gala. Can't can't discount Gala. Gala, I think, was brought down to its knees. This is a cryptocurrency that was nearly a dollar in the last bull market. And it was brought down to one cent. That's a bargain. 
right? It was it was you know potentially overvalued or maybe overhyped in the last bull market, but it sits as the kind of blue chip in games development. And I think this is like, kind of like the Bitcoin, like the money flow feels safer with Gala maybe than it does with, um, you know, maybe higher risk plays in the same arena. So where you've got Gala, they've got an exceptional team, exceptional team born out of, um, you know, uh, Zynga, uh, social networking, you know, before Facebook. Like these guys are, uh, are bring, uh, have got a, a massive catalogue of really high quality games. Town Stars, excellent. Spire Tanks, excellent. Walking Dead, which is a licensed game. You know, what you don't get with like the likes of Nakamoto games, Wagami games, playable, is you don't get licensed games. You don't get games that are endorsed by the brand. You know, having the Walking Dead and AMC uh, as, as within the catalogue of licensed games for Gala shows the quality of the Gala project. But Gala is not just gaming. Gala is also film and music too. And they have already gotten the likes of Snoop Dogg, uh, as part of their, you know, kind of celebrity promoters, as it were. So as a result of that, Gala, I think, is a very, very good play. Even even, even in its second hype cycle. Next is Hex. So Hex, like, I was wrong to doubt Hex last time. To me, I'm taking a very high-risk, convicted position in Hex. I think that Hex has got the ability to not even go up to its last all-time high and still make a massive multiplier. 89x from its current price. But I imagine the price will probably go down again, maybe back to its lows, maybe well, way lower than its lows. And it's 167x from where I bought in, in my personal opinion. And it's just simple DeFi. You buy, you stake. You, have, you, you can stake for a big payday also. A lot of people just compound gains. One of my friends who's a big, big Hex staker. It's a lot of money from just staking Hex. And good and good staking rewards from Hex. That's what you want in DeFi. Something just simple to get. Next, Aptos. I think that Aptos not had a bull market yet. It's going to be going into its next bull market as its first hype cycle. Aptos is... A fast transaction is the next Solana. This is amongst the group of Solana killers. So when you've got your group of Ethereum killers, so you've got you've got Solana, you've got Avalanche, you've got Algorand, you've got Hedera, you've got the, those that are the Ethereum killer group of cryptocurrency and Nier as well. You've got the Sala you've got the subset of Solana killers. Which is Aptos, Sui, um, yeah, Arbitrum, Optimism. The, the ones that are looking to be the Solana of the last cycle. And Aptos is definitely one that has that potential. 200,000 transactions per second, low transaction fee, very good adoption into the tens of millions already. During a bear market, people have opened up Aptos wallets, put their Aptos you know, assets in there. And these guys haven't got an ecosystem yet. I mean, they have got like the openings of an ecosystem. They've got some apps that are built on Aptos, but not a lot. Not a lot at this stage. Nothing that's in the that you could say is a main name yet. It's like a household name. You had lots of household names on Ethereum. You've got some household names now on Solana, but you've got nothing on Aptos. Almost a blank slate to be able to write those games. Now this went from three dollars twenty to twenty four dollars at the beginning of the at the beginning of last year, and recently it has gone up to like nine dollars sixty one. It's had a little bit of a of a run, but Solana in the last bear market didn't do anything until 2021. It was out in 2020, did nothing the whole of that year. Well, it came out kind of summer 2020 and was stagnant, was under $2 for the longest time. And then I spoke about it. It did a little jump from just under $2 to $3. And then boom, $250. But it did that at the end of the market, just like um, Terra Luna did. And Aptos, I think, has just got the same... Like, I've heard one YouTuber saying, oh, I've removed Aptos because it hasn't done anything. Time. Patience. These are virtues in cryptocurrency. You need to wait. And uh, Aptos, I think, is one that could yeah, explode $250 uh, in time. Definitely. And a lot of people say, oh, it's got large inflation. 
inflation doesn't matter if you can if you can compensate it with growth with speculation and that's what happened with Solana. That's what happened with Matic. Matic had an avalanche. Avalanche and Matic had arguably the highest inflation rates in the last bull market. And yet, one did 100x, one did 1,000x. So I don't really pay too much attention to um, inflation. I just look at it as a way of being able to buy when they release a load of tokens. When they release a load of tokens and it dumps, then I buy. That's where inflation matters to me. But it doesn't really put me off. Not hugely. Next up, we have got SWE, same class, even faster, 260,000 transactions per second. Again, in the millions in terms of adoption. The amount of wallets being created, a huge amount. And again, you'll have games, you'll have memes, you'll have DeFi, uh, real world assets, payments, currencies, everything, stable coins, all of this to come for Aptos and SWE. But in my opinion, I think SWE is the better one. I think SWE is the more superior one as far as technology is concerned. I'd say this is the one I'm probably most excited about. Actually, oddly, is the one that's done the worst out of the ones that I've bought. You know, Solana 10, Avalanche 5, and yet Sui 2. What the fuck? But as far as I'm concerned, there's going to be a point at which inflation no longer is a problem. I think that's the main problem with Sui. But you don't want to invest in it because it's highly inflationary. But I think that eventually that will just not be a problem. They'll grow an ecosystem and this will go to, I've put $25, which be about 63x, 32x from today. I actually think it could be more than that. The reason I put $25 is purely on the tokenomics. I think that it's it's, it's going to be too diluted to do like $100. But um, just have to wait and see. Have to wait and see. I could be wrong. Next, Elrond. I took a position in Elrond during the bear market simply because this has got a lot of the components of uh, a very high performing layer one it's basically a store of value in terms of it's deflationary right over the course of time they're going to be they're going to be burning tokens out of circulation which means it's got that store of value element like bitcoin they're a very very fast transaction network just like um just like the likes of solana and very very cheap just like the likes of solana as well so it's basically got bitcoin and solana as its kind of vision right ah oh, hold on it's Multiverse X now. And that is the bearish side of this cryptocurrency. As far as I was concerned, when this was Alron, I was I was really wanting in on this one. I was thinking this is going to be a beauty. It's going to be a, a big hit. But then they changed their name to Multiverse X, which is literally the shittest name I think I've ever heard of a cryptocurrency. And that is what I believe has set back um multiverse x a little bit i looked in their community i looked at what they were saying and they were up in arms that they weren't consulted you know, the the investors weren't consulted on the name they didn't see where multiverse x came from as a name and i agree it's the worst name i've ever heard of a cryptocurrency so that's what i don't like about it but technology wise it's still very good it's not going into the next Bull market is its first hype cycle like it did the last, but it's still a very strong coin in my opinion and has a huge ecosystem of which you trust is part of it. Star Atlas, I still think this has got tremendous upside potential even from where it is right now. I think this one could go to a dollar. I think maybe I'm being a bit optimistic there. But um, the reason this went down so much in the first place and therefore enables a big multiplier is because they had their funds on FTX and FTX went down and they lost their fun or they lost a lot of their runway. But they've continued building and they've got a very, very good game so far. And I don't think they're going to run out. I think the, the, you know, I think the fact they've managed to keep alive till this point and still marketing up until this point, I think that's it. They, the worst is over now. Now it's just a case of let's see what they provide. This is very much the same kind of quality as Alluvium, same kind of grandioseness of vision, a very, very big open world space game. Oh, I can't wait to play this one. I can't wait! Get a spaceship, NFT, tour space, kill motherfuckers, and make money. I think Star Atlas has got supreme potential. Very, very high quality game. And Solana's first game. So you could look at this as kind of like the crypto punks of Solana. Because it's the original. Next, Psy. 
I took a position on Sai, which I didn't think was going <laughs> to actually work out to much. Sai is a DeFi layer 1. It's like Injective. It's like Akala. It's a layer 1 that was purpose-built to be fast for DeFi. They were looking to onboard DeFi platform payment systems, yield farming, staking, all of that going on to Sai or Say. Um, however, they also have a longer term scope of being a, just a normal layer one, just a fast transaction layer one, 20,000 transactions per second uh, in that ilk of Solana Killer and very, very short, sharp name like Sui, Sui, Sai. I like it. I bought I bought a bit. I didn't buy a huge amount, but it's ended up being 0.4% of my portfolio just simply because of the run it's done. And I still think it's got a ways to go. It's probably doing better from where I bought it than where you would buy it from now. So I wouldn't say this is necessarily a good buy from now. Earmark if it goes a lot lower, which it can do with inflation. <clears throat> Coming towards the end now, next, Pith Network. Pith Network is like the Solana version of Chainlink. Now, in my opinion... This is, uh, I mean, this is a cryptocurrency that, um, you know, went right back down. It came out, surged, everybody was talking about it, went up to like 60 cents or something. Now it's come back down to its lows. Come back down to its, basically, right down. And uh, this is like a, in my opinion anyway, a, Sol a, a chain link competitor. It's like, having, it's like having Solana and Avalanche. If Solana does well, great. If it doesn't do so well, but Avalanche does better, I profit. Same with chain link. You can't... Chainlink is a Goliath. Chainlink uh, is elite. Chainlink is the best in class. But Pith Network is slightly, actually technologically, a bit better. Like, Chainlink has got the network effect, the reputation, customers from all over cryptocurrency. Most cryptocurrency platforms use Chainlink for their Oracle solutions, for their getting data from off-chain to on-chain data. But Pith Network does it, A, it's a first-party oracle, whereas Chainlink is a third-party oracle. So Pith is a first-party oracle, and it's Solana, so it's cheaper. Cheaper. And arguably faster as well. So by that logic, I'm having Pith as a Chainlink backup. So I've not invested a huge amount at this point. Only 0.4% of my portfolio. But um, I would be looking to get a little bit more if it goes down more. Because I don't necessarily think that the multiplier potential is huge. $10 is where I see the upper end of this. And that would be getting to kind of where Chainlink is now. But I think Chainlink is going to go $250. So I don't think that it's too big a jump to see Pith getting to where Chainlink is now. A bit like how Solana gets to where Ethereum is now in the last cycle. That kind of logic. So Pith Network, having it as a backup. I love Oracles. I think that they have... I think there's quite a lot of them. But I think the Pith is probably the second best to Chainlink. Let me just have a look and just make sure there's no more Super Chats. There probably are. I just didn't want to lose momentum on the video. Hex and Pulse Chain are my top picks from RH Max. <laughs> I like the name. RH Maximalist. A.K.A. Richard Hart Maximalist. Nice. Um... What your opinion about ZK sort of finance? I'll have a look at that later. I got into Corpo C because of you. Is Mixmo already game still able to get into? Mixmo I don't think have closed, but I don't know how you would get into them. Um, what other gaming seeds do you highly recommend? Um, I mean, I like the look of Bloodloop and I like the look of Gunzilla a lot. They're both they're both gonna be powerhouses. Um probably some more. I've heard of a few more, but I've not really looked into them. Those are the ones that I, I'm going after anyway. So I appreciate the Super Chats, people. Love them. Super, if the BT, BTC ETF is approved, will that throw us into the bull run? As I've mentioned, it throws us into a bull run, yes. But it's a little bit like... It's a little bit like... Having a wedding in winter... You could chance it. You could be lucky. You could have a wedding and, it, you know, you've got an outdoor element to that wedding and you could chance it and think, oh, the weather's going to, weather could be good on this day, right? But the likelihood is, is it's going to rain, it's going to be cold and you're going to have a, a catastrophe of a wedding. 
That's the same here. Same situation. It's the threat. Okay, it's, there's a big threat of recession. So if an ETF comes along, it's like it makes the sun come out for a bit. But when a recession comes, it will make the clouds hover over and piss on all the gains. So I guess I would be looking for an absolutely utopian scenario, which would be that um, ETF gets rejected, not rejected, but gets postponed from January and it gets postponed till March. Recession, then the ETF gets granted up only. That would be the only circumstance we'd have up only. An ETF would be up for now and then down later. I don't know if maybe that's what BlackRock would be after. But look, if an ETF gets approved, my personal opinion is is, is that it's 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 um it's all been one big charade all along. Because an ETF could by rights should have been approved like three years ago or four years ago. I've been around in cryptocurrency for six years. I've seen the ETF narrative. Every bull market has always been there and it's never been approved. And the reason it's never been approved is because of market manipulation, which is still happening. Tether can be printed ad nauseum by the powers that be that aren't controlled by regulators. Regulators want to have complete power over the industry. That's why Binance has gone down. That's why CZ has gone down. They want power over the biggest player, the biggest exchange in crypto, and they've got it. Now they need to get power over the, the regulatory part, the stable coins, the, the other exchanges, before an ETF could by rights be approved. Because market manipulation is just as bad as it has ever been. So for the ETF to be approved, to me, it would just seem like a big charade was played. They could have done it any time because the manipulation was as good as it is now as it, is, as it was then. And they're just doing it now purely because of some of some um, power play. I don't know. But uh, it makes no sense to me that it would be approved now. It makes no sense. Because the issues that were there before are still there. Um, anything else? Pulse Chain will be the Chad move of 2024. Stay away if you're a girly boy. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Right, okay. Next... We have got Immutable X. Immutable X I picked up basically within 48 hours of FTX going down. Um, Immutable X absolutely plummeted. 37 cents. I got it. I got it on the bottom. I don't think it's going to go back down there. And uh, I took a relatively sizable position. I'm surprised it's only 4.4%. But um, I took a relatively sizable position in Immutable X. And uh, and I think it will still do well in the next in the next bull run. I think a fifty three x for me. Um, it didn't go down low enough, I think, to really unlock the x's. Like I think fifteen cents, like going back to the IDO price, would have unlocked the gains. But yeah, I think it could. I think twenty twenty dollars. That's probably a little bit pessimistic. Hmm. Maybe twenty five. It doesn't really change it that much, but. I think it's a very, very good project, but I think it's a little bit late getting into it now. Personal opinion. Next, we have got Sunday Swap. Very high risk play. This is a D-Gen play. Sunday Swap is a Dex on Cardano. And we've already seen that one subsection of the Cardano ecosystem has done incredibly well. Cornucopius did a, a 14x. And Dex is gonna, will follow suit eventually. Eventually. Right, so I personally think the Sunday was very, very high risk because they had a court case. Um, but I think I bought this pretty close to the bottom. Um, and I think that this could blow up. If this goes just a little bit, and remember, this went up to $1.20 um, in a bear market. This came out in around about late January, February 2022. Missed the bull market trajectory totally. And then it came down to uh, uh, unfathomable value in my opinion unfathomable this makes it around about this makes it like three million market cap what this is a crypto that should have been in the billions because the brand name of sunday swap was so big prior to launch so i think this can still do very well i've used sunday swap as a very very good platform very colorful great branding um min swap's part of shit 
So I think that Sunday Swap is one of the potential future key winners of the Cardano narrative, particularly as Cardano gets upgrades in its own network. Next, Optimism. I got a lucky buy at four. Well, it wasn't lucky. It was unlucky. I didn't buy more, but um, I got I've got it at forty nine cents. It's currently three eighty four. Again, with EIP four eight four four, this is going to make Optimism become a power player. Optimism is a power player. Simple as that. It's already underpinning a lot of the top technology. It's already underpinning Binance Smart Chain, uh, Optimism, um, not Optimism, uh, Base Blockchain. The, the list will undoubtedly go on over time. And I think I think Optimism is uh, is going to be a, a big hitter. Uh, um, Multipliers-wise from here, maybe not so much. Just simply purely because of its inflation. Probably could do better next time. But we'll have to wait and see. It could do better than $30. Next, Magic. Magic is the, is the Gala of Arbitrum. So it's a catalogue and arcade of games on Arbitrum. And this one... Really blew up initially when the Arbitrum ecosystem, when people were getting into the Arbitrum ecosystem to try and get some of the Arbitrum airdrop, um, this really blew up. And I think this will blow up again. This, uh, I imagine, will go up to $25. 58x from where I got in at 40, 43 cents. 23x from here. But like I said, basically, fast. it's going to be a fast transaction and low transaction cost version of Gala. So you'll be able to do all of the, the gaming blockchain-y activities for a fraction of the price of Gala. Because Gala's on, on ETH. Next, Arbitrum. The big daddy of Layer 2s, in my opinion. This one's a huge one. I think that the, the, this is this has arguably got the largest transaction, the largest total value locked. This is the fourth largest total value locked amongst every blockchain in existence. That shows you the power of Arbitrum. And it's only recently started going. Because it took a while. Again, this has got high inflation. But if you buy this after the big inflationary events, then you may be able to get a better bargain and it'll fly from there. And I think it's going up $35. The 22x. You've got to remember, this is a mid-risk. You're not going to make the massive multipliers on a mid-risk. But you're still getting into a really top-notch um, quality, top-notch um, technology early still. It's only 2x. Above its lowest. Which I got at its lowest. Because I was stalking Arbitrum. <laughs> right. I'm getting towards the end. I'm going to start reeling these off. Ava Launch. So this is my play on the Avalanche ecosystem. I just love the Avalanche ecosystem. I love Avalanche. I love um, playable games. I love a launch pad that enables me to get into launch uh, avalanche games which at this present time is only ava launch and i know quite a bit a lot of um influential people in, in ava launch which is what lets lets me think this is a quality um launch pad so it's currently done a 3x when i first covered it it was uh basically this price so i only put a bit in which i which i kick myself about point point two five of a percent I kick myself for that, but I do think this is going to perform really, really well, just purely because I think Avalanche will perform very, very well. And I think that... I think I'm only paying... I'm put $30 as the highest ball price. Not because I think that this is a... Not because I um, am being very conservative, but because I actually think a better Avalanche launch pad will come out, and that will be the better one. But at this point, Avalanche is all we've got. And so I've get, taken a position in that. Zen, a simple DeFi platform. Stake it simply. Uh, it's virtually right now near its bottom. And this is one that's had incredible network effect. The amount of people who have minted Zen, I think the amount of people actually exceeds probably the amount of people that have got Ethereum wallets. Pure, pure and simple. I did a count up. 500 million wallets what that's just that's un that's unfathomable that shows you the size of zen and eventually that will turn into money flow eventually um but this is one you have to be patient with it could hit at any point or it could take forever to hit but i'm just being patient with this next veracity a DSO play high risk 
This is not in its first hype cycle. This did come out in the last hype cycle, but I think that there's just a huge community behind Veracity. They just love it. It's like XRP. Huge community that just love Veracity. And as a result, I just see it's doing extremely well. 50 cents is where I see it's going up to. I don't think this has even started to blow up yet. And next time around, they're going to have the actual platform out. They're going to have an esports platform. They're going to have Vera Views, which will actually be um, doing what they say they are going to do, which is preventing ad fraud for people advertising on social media. I think it's a, I think it's potentially a fantastic play. And again, not really kicked off yet. I think it will though. Tacky, I've sold half of my tacky position. So this recently did a. 10x for me so if you go back a few months i did a video on tacky i bought it at 0 0.0053 and then i saw half of it the other day when it went to um 5.6 cents so i kept it a little bit because it's a very high risk play it's deso i don't have much in the way of deso narrative so i want to keep you know this one could have a coinbase listing it was invested in by coinbase invested in by solana ventures Invested in by a lot of the great and the good investors. I'm surprised this hasn't, it's taken this long to blow up. But again, this could do very, very well. 40 cents, only a mere 10x from where it was, but from where I bought it, 75x. And, you know, they have recently slightly pivoted. They are mainly a decentralized social media play. And we've already seen that decentralized social media uh, has already started um, uh, blowing the roof off. Look, Deso is now the ninth best performing narrative out of all narratives. It's gone from 16th place to ninth place, and mainly because of Deso and Tacky. And that's showing the, the demand. The demand is there for these alternative platforms. I'm already seeing some YouTubers saying they're going to rumble because they don't want to be kicked off by YouTube for having an opinion. So it's, it's only a matter of time before decentralized social media platforms absolutely kick off. Next, Ocean, AI play is old. I think AIT is a better play than Ocean. They're very, very similar. Both data-based ba data uh, artificial intelligence projects. Only AIT is newer and more audience participation, easier to understand, better UX. So uh, Ocean Protocol has done a decent multiplier. It's done a 5x. I sold a bit. Um, and it's not. I, I love the name. The brand name Ocean's excellent, and I think it will do well. But um, you know, but I think there are. I think there are better AI plays. But I am happy to have this in my portfolio for now. Illuvium. Illuvium's a triple A. Uh, it's a triple A space game. Bear with me a second. I don't want to go over my time limit. Um, yeah. So it's a um. Triple A, a triple A, uh, space based crypto animals game. Really, really nice exploratory, uh, open world, uh, 3D game. Just like you'll see on a lot of those third person where you follow the main character kind of games. Smooth frames per minute, excellent quality, but not in its first ball run. But I do think this could get near to its previous all-time high of $1,500. Helium, I invested in very, very early on at $1.50. Happy to see where this goes. Decentralized internet, making it very, very easy. We're going to have a decentralized, we're going to have a decentralized ecosystem over time. We're going to have, um, crypto is going to permeate in, in, a, in a much wider context over time. And Helium is going to be one of those players, in my opinion. So I'm just going to hold this one to about 60. I believe this will go up to $60. Decentraland and the Sandbox. Is it Sandbox next? Yes. Decentraland and Sandbox. I've taken a position for re relatively similar reasons. They're the Bitcoin and Ethereum of the metaverse. Uh, they're mid-risk. I like them. I very much do like Decentraland, actually. It's a 3D open metaverse that you build on, you can build, you know, a building of your choice, you can lease that building, you can do things on that land, it's excellent, I, I do really like it, 
Obviously, the adoption would have gone right down over the bear market. But I can see this coming back. And same for the sandbox. They're safe-ish plays. I don't expect to make big multi... I, well, I did get into them very, very low price. So I do expect to make decent multipliers out of them. Yeah. I'm surprised, actually. They're not a bigger part of my portfolio. But it's Metaverse. I'm not as bullish on Metaverse as I am with gaming, let's say. Uh, next, Games for a Living. I invested in this very, very low, 0 0.005. You have watched me doing it, if you watch me on Twitch. And uh, this is this went on to uh, make a very good multiplier, and it presently sits at 8x for me. Um, and I think overall this will end up being a 200x for me, um, and a 25x if you got in from today. Hence why I'd probably wait if you were looking to take a position in this one. But um, it's basically just like Gala, again, like Gala. Very experienced team as well. Their team is from Electronic Arts. Uh, um, from, uh, what's the name of the king? I want to say it's Act Act no, Activision. And then something king, I'm sure. But they're, they're big on mobile games, whatever the case. Pepe! This hasn't really kicked off, but I think this could do really well. I think this could do really well in the next bull market, just purely because of the meme nature and the fact that it's so easy to understand. And meme coins do their absolute best in the euphoria stage of a bull market. And this one's not been in a bull market. So I think this one, I may be being slightly optimistic. I might downgrade it to maybe that. No. I'll go. I'll, I'll. I'll go where I had my initial conviction. I do think this could do very, very well, just purely because of the fact it's easy to understand and it's not had a bull market yet, and it kind of sits there as one of the elite um, meme coins, and it actually sits quite far down in terms of market cap compared to like the likes of uh, Doge, Shiba Inu, and Flocky. Next, Shrapnel. This is this cycle. Next cycle's Illuvian. This is the high quality. Triple A game. And I personally wish I'd bought way more of this. I didn't buy anywhere near enough. And it just it just went away. It just went away. And before I knew it was 30 cents. But they are um, airdropping from what I have heard. And people are selling those airdrop tokens. And it's bringing the price right down. But I think this one's going to be a big hit. This one could be the biggest hit. Simply because the people who are you know, advisors and promoters of this have massive followings so myth who is this huge twitch streamer for fortnite one of the biggest streamers ever of fortnite um is an advisor and a player of shrapnel and he is one of the best kind of online gun gaming players in the world so he will undoubtedly help with helping shrapnel explode as one of the big games in crypto and so that's why I really am bullish on this. I thought this was going to go down, maybe down to about three to five cents. It could still, but probably won't. But I think this is, uh, I think it's a, a, a big hit of a game. Very, very good graphics. Pulse X, um, things could, again, do very, very well. Could do what Pulse Chain will do, basically. They are burning um, Pulse X at a much faster rate, which is what could make this a little bit more bullish than Pulse Chain. Even though this has hardly moved. Uh, in the past few months, I think that once Richard Hart is free from all the crap, he's going to be really promoting Pulse Chain and Pulse X. And I think that's going to make, just purely because how low it is in terms of token price, people are going to want to buy it. And it's simple to understand DeFi. It's got yield farms, it's got staking, and it's on a much faster chain than Ethereum and definitely much cheaper. Hello. Uh, again, these guys are a gaming platform, but also TV and media. So they've got a TV show called Killer Whales, which has got uh, arguably the, some of the biggest crypto YouTubers. And that helps with getting the name out there. Hello, we're very intelligent. Paul Caslin, the founder of Hello, extremely intelligent person. Extremely intelligent. I've no more, more words to say than that. He has game theory, the growth of Hello perfectly he has created a game show he's a creative director he has done um the brit awards and and, and, and creative pieces in fashion and he can create a, he he understood what the market needed which is a t 
TV show that's like the crypto version of Shark Tank, and he got the biggest YouTubers in the space to be the the, the sharks, essentially. And that's what's helped Hello really gain a lot of traction and a lot of attention. And I think this will continue to do well. Probably three dollars, I would say, hundred x from where I got in. From now, probably not a great multiplier. But um, I could be wrong. I don't think I will be. <laughs> Wilder World. This is a 5G um, high quality metaverse. It's meant to be like the, the the real life GTA. Basically, you do missions. You have an apartment. You live a baller lifestyle, but in VR. Really cool. Love the idea of it. It's got Arthur Hayes. It's got quite a few, um, I would say, reputable investors in it. I think it could do very well. Um, 56 x maybe from where I got in, 18 cents. Probably go up to about three cent, three dollars. I don't think it'll do as well as it did in the last bull run, which was about seven dollars. I think it'll do decently. Artificial liquid intelligence. This is a very good AI play. Artificial liquid intelligence is basically a AI protocol for um, NFTs to give life to NFTs and also character generated um, AI software. So when you speak to these AI bots that look how you want them to look. That's what you can create with artificial liquid intelligence. You create a character bot that looks exactly what you want it to look like. You or an NFT or a celebrity, whatever. And it's your it's your bot. And you teach it by talking to it. And that's what you got with artificial liquid intelligence. It's a modern play, in my opinion. And uh, I think it's going to do very well. I haven't taken much of a position in it. And it's not gone up a lot. So it gives me room to, do, to take a bigger position should... The recession come and take this to much lower lows than where it is. Next, playable games. This is the Gala of Avalanche. Love this one. I've bought four nodes so that it makes me DCA into it because I want to take a position. I don't want it to run away and me never have a position. So I've got four nodes that basically gives me around about $30, $40 a day worth of playable games tokens. And over the course of time, that will give me a huge bank um, that will enable me to... I believe, ride what will be an incredible success train for playable games. So playable games, very high quality stuff. If you look at what they are building currently, what they've got ready, um, what they've got soon ready to go, very high quality stuff. That's Avalanche, my favourite chain. So why wouldn't I want a position in that? Oasis. Oasis is a, it's basically an Illuvium competitor. So what you do with Oasis is it's a gaming inc gaming infrastructure. You can build games directly on Oasis with these little hubs. These little hubs. You've got your you can have the whole ecosystem existing on a hub that's got its own gasless layer two on it. So you have fast performing um, games on Oasis. Very much one for the future. The guys behind it are guys from Sega, um, Bandai Namco, and a few other big names in Asia. So I think this one could do very well. It's already started to do well. It's already 2x from where I bought in, having basically been stagnant for, for ages. And then the last one is Big Time. Big Time I only took a small position in, but um, Big Time I think is going to be another one of those ne next cycles gala. I think that there's going to be a big race for the next big things in the, ne in the next bull run. We're going to have a race for the next Ethereum, the next Solana, and we're going to have a race for the next gala. And I think that that is a space that is occupied by some great potentials. Playable, big time, Nakamoto, Wagami. It's quite a games for a living. Hello. Quite a few vying for that top position. So big time, I think it could do very, very well. All right, so there we are. So those, that's my portfolio. My legacy portfolio and my new portfolio. There may be a couple missing. But they are going to be very, very small positions, not even worth talking about. Now, the most important bit, the most important bit, my stables. What am I going to do with them? Stable coin plans. So you may be in the position where you are wanting to make 100x, but you've missed a lot of what has happened so far. So let me give you a guide on what I'm going to be doing with my stable coins. So first of all, I'm going to be getting into pre-sales in high-performing niches. Okay, so you've already seen with uh, AIT Protocol did that. It's a high-performing niche. But instead of going for what's already out and chasing that, don't bother. Go for what's new. Same with gaming. So Mixmob is my first example 
of something I've gotten into from Ground Zero and launch pads. So Ape Terminal, Mixmob, AIT protocols are my examples of what I've already done without there even being a bull market yet. But this is what I plan to do with my stable coins, coins go into pre-sales. Just go into pre-sales, but in the high-performing niches. And I just showed you already, looking at the narrative plays, what are the best performing niches. IDOs on launch pads. So, Star Launch, Ape Terminal, the Bluezilla launch pads, Ava Launch. Basically, just go after IDOs. Right? That is what, if you've got dormant money, you get into assets at their rock bottom prices. I would say my biggest money maker in the last bull run was launch pads. Totally. I made, I would say, the majority of my gains from launch pads. Launchpad tokens and launches on launchpad tokens. You've got that two tier benefit. So try and get into launch pads, get into pre sales. Star Launch Ape Terminal, uh, Bluezilla, um, Ava Launch, C Defy, whatever you've got the budget for, IDOs is what you need to go for. But these are going to be mine Star, La Star Launch, Ape Terminal, Bluezilla for now. Then I'm going to be investing in high risk and very high risk coins during live trends. So that's not investing now. That's waiting for when the trend is current. So if you remember basically two months ago, gaming started and then all of a sudden, boom, just coins just started coming out of nowhere and booming. And that's what you do. Invest during the live trend. Don't invest waiting for the trend you invest during the trend because things don't move sometimes until you wait for the trend like for instance in the last bull market um you had a cryptocurrency what's it called that vr one oh, i can't remember what it's called something vr but anyway um you had that and it did nothing throughout the whole bull market and then all of a sudden, the metaverse thing kicked in, shot, shot right up, 140x overnight. Wait for that live trend in the bull market. Don't, don't, don't worry about, don't chase highs. Don't chase highs, honestly. That is not what I've ever done. It's the guide to make a few money. Don't chase highs. You're either on the tail end of it or you're going to make very, very, very shit gains. So invest at lows during live trends. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about, about that in two seconds. Newly launched fundamentally sound coins. Keep an eye out for these. Shrapnel was one recently. Celestia. So I covered um, Celestia when it first came out. It came out as $2.40. And I said, I'm very surprised it's not gone up. But this is a very good cryptocurrency. And then the next day it was $4. Then it was 6 Then it was 12 before I knew it. So, newly launched, fundamentally sound coins, i.e. they've got very, very good VCs, great price point, um, but they just don't have the price action, get in before it happens. So, Shrapnel, I did that, it, it, it paid off. T um, Celestia, I didn't get in, I missed out. GameSwift, that's a very, very good Arbitrum based, you know, Gala competitor, basically, missed out on that. But the opportunity was there, and I provided GameSwift at its bottom. So, if you got in, which I know a lot of you did, then well done. But that's an example. Fundamentally sound coins. Not these high risk, very high risk coins, which are like your your Creos, your your Lit Labs, the shit ones, right? The, the, the purely on osmosis make the the gains. You go for fundamentally sound coins with the high, with the top VCs that just haven't had the price action yet. And then lastly, meme coins in a bull market. Just wait, wait, get into ones that have got a great brand name. So the likes of like Wojak. Flocky, they were all based on an actual trend or an actual brand. So Flocky was based on Elon Musk's dog. Um, Pepe is based on arguably one of the most historically famous memes on the internet. Grok was based on uh, Elon Musk's AI software. That kind of thing. Big brands. Don't give you shitty things like like Sol, Pepe, Inu, 2.0, sort of dumb like that. Or, 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 or Alpha Fox. What the fuck is Alpha? No, go for a meme coin that's actually a brand that's recognisable and stands out and has sustainable, has potentially sustainable gains. And and uh, part of live trends, so it could be a gaming base, let's say, or a, um, 
um, like a, a gaming thing that's, that's that's done really well in the mainstream media, and then all of a sudden somebody names a meme after it. Live trends do very very well, and then there is new chains as well. Memes that launch on um, Aptos, on Sui, on I don't know Casper, whatever. I was going to say Casper when they got smart contracts. That kind of thing. New chains. That's where you're going to get the explosion. So, for instance, Cockin you, um, uh, Ninja, um, Bonk. There were original coins, the new coin, the um, first coins on new chains. That's what you want. As far as for very high risk 100x coins, how can you identify them? Right? This is how. They're listed on. A DEX or a tier 2 exchange with low liquidity. Okay, so by that I mean it's on like Mexi or Gate.io or Bit or something really shit. If it's on Binance, Coinbase, QCoin, um, what else is that? I can't even remember. I can't have, it's changed just go out of my head. But if it's on a tier 1 exchange with high liquidity, it doesn't move. You will notice that when a YouTuber talks about something that's got high liquidity, it goes up 2x. When a YouTube, when a big YouTuber talks about something that is listed on a DEX or, or, and or a tier 2 exchange with very, very low liquidity, low volume, it goes up 10x overnight. So that's how you do it. You have to, the high, very high risk coins only listed on a DEX. You take the risk, but the reward could be huge. Trending. Okay, so it has to be. In a trending narrative, so it, the, the narrative has to be happening. It's either the beginning, so when I first talked about games, that was the very beginning of the narrative. Playable was like two cents, Game Swift was like ten cents. Like, right at the very beginning, that's where you get in. Um, and even at the end of the narrative, is the pump zone, but don't get in after. Right, you get, in, get into games now, for instance, you're outside of that zone, there's no 100x's now. You had to get in during the pump zone. Which is right at the beginning of the narrative. You know when it's happening. Because me, Alex Becker, Elio are talking about it. This is quite an important one. Large YouTuber invested. Okay, so this is why um, a lot of the big, uh, a lot of the good gaming cryptocurrency soared. Because they were endorsed by large YouTubers. Okay, so I'm talking about uh, over 100,000 subscribers. And, tw and or 20k views per video. So the likes of Elio, uh, Alex Becker, Coin Bureau, Cryptos R Us. Whenever they say they've bought a coin, that tends to pump. However, Elio and Alex, they talk about coins that are on DEXs. You know, the likes of Coin, um, coin Bureau and Cryptos R Us, they tend to talk about cryptos when they are already on a decent exchange. So you need to get you need to find the right YouTubers, the ones that say they're in something that's that's a, a super degen play. They that works. That's what you need to. Do. If you go into something that no YouTubers talk about, so there's a lot of people in my um, Telegram group that will say, um, "What do you think of this game? What do you think of this game? I think what what part what a pile of shit, right? What a pile of shit, right? Not interested in it, right? It's more than likely Elio and Alex will probably feel the same." So, you know, going into something that they have gotten into pushes it right up. So you can either do that via the, you know, the way I showed you from Arkham Intelligence, where you can look at their wallets, you can see what they've invested in before they've even done it. Or you just are first to watch their videos. You've got the notifications on. By the way, people, if you haven't already, uh, I would really appreciate if you could, could you quite literally just tap a like on there? I, I, I'd, I'd love you. I'd love you. To the end of the year. But when a large YouTuber gets into it, be early. But that's what you do. You get into that. If they've already talked about it like a week ago, don't even bother. It's done. But if you get into it right at the very beginning. Once they talk about it, you know it's going to fly. So it's, be, it's useful to have their channel notifications on. Um, when there's a long-term bullish environment, that's absolutely perfect. Okay, so that means the trend. So let's say a gaming trend comes up. They get the coverage and that's their initial 10x. Then you've got the osmosis phase. So even though gaming stops being a trend, everybody's speculating, everybody's looking for the next, you know, the coin that hasn't yet pumped in, in that narrative, it goes up by osmosis. So if you get the trend plus osmosis, you get the 100x. What you've had recently is the trend only, 
right? So where me, Alex, and Elio have talked about gaming coins, you've got the trend only. That only takes it so far. So I think that oh, the coins we've spoken about, none of more than 15x, right? None of more than 15x, because you need the osmosis phase for the last part of the move, which is that sustained kind of six-month period of people just throwing money in, and then it just goes up. So that is what's going to make the that's what's going to make the hundred X's. Okay, you need a combination of everything, all of this, and then lastly, pumpermentals. It should be like its first hype cycle. The price should be under a dollar. Um, it should have good marketing. Look at profit bots; their marketing's on point. VCs and quality. Like the VCs don't even have to be like Andreessen Horowitz or um, Animoca Brands or. You know, Pantera, Fenbushi, FBG, any of it. It doesn't have to be that. It just has to have decent VCs. The more quality the VC, the better it will do. Right. Now, I wanted to show you the other part of this portfolio, which is portfolio stats. So what you can see from looking at my legacy and my new portfolio is, is that this is position size. Okay. So I'm talking about the 15%. Right, the portfolio size for blue chips is 38.1%. Now, this is not deliberate as such. I've, I've not like said, oh, I'm gonna go for the um, I'm gonna go for the safe options. No, it's because for my legacy, I've been building it since 2017. Okay, so it's 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 it's, it's natural that I'd have got into Cardano very early, Matic very early, Solana very early. Um, Bitcoin and Ethereum very, very early. So that's why it takes up a big part. But I would say this is not how most people have it. I would say most of the people who play it safe, i.e. most of crypto YouTube, are on about 75% blue chips. Blue chips or mid-risk. Me, 38%. 22% on mid-risk. 24% on high-risk. 12% on very high risk. Now, you're probably thinking that's quite low, but actually the reason why they're very high risk is because they're very low market cap and therefore comprise a very small part of the portfolio. A lot of the like blue chips, Chainlink, Bitcoin, they've been going up. They've been doing really good performances since, um, since October. So that's why they have particularly outperformed. But I'd say this was still a very high percentage size of my overall portfolio to have very high risk. And then 4% is not yet launched. Aged to new bias, 50-50. I've got a lot of legacy plays. And I've even got some in my new portfolio that are aged coins. But it's a good 50-50 split. You diversify the risk. Really what you want is you want something new. That's going into its first hype cycle. And I think that will probably come for me over time. But for now, at this point, 50-50, it's okay, I would say. And this is new, like, since 2022, I would say. Prices, really you want something under a dollar, right? The best performing cryptocurrencies in the last bull market all were mostly under a dollar. Right, wrong one. Look at this. Most of, look. 2000 x hex and there were loads that did over 100 x and and you you struggle to find anything over a dollar one over a dollar two over a dollar that's it two over a dollar amongst all those 100 to 2000 x's so really that is an ideal scenario because those open up psychologically fantastic buy prices that's what people want they want to feel like they get a lot for their money as far as the portfolio quantity, my highest at this point, without even doing too much of a bias, is gaming. 34% for gaming, 24% layer ones, 18% launch pads. Very small on uh, DeFi layer two and AI, and even smaller on DSO payments, re real world assets, bots and oracles. And really, I go off of the narrative buys for this so memes you do better in memes investing when it's current rather than investing in an aged meme DeFi, i've got the simple DeFi's hex and zen layer two i've got the big brands arb optimism and Me and uh, manta and then really it's layer ones 
Layer 1s, those are what I go for on launch pads. So I've got pretty much a concentration on what um, on what have been the best performing narratives in the last three months. I think that's a relatively good handle. What I have got is what's really explain what's performed well. As far as additions and deletions are concerned, now this is a very interesting one. So as far as deletions, this is what I'm looking to delete. X money, you trust. It's aged, it's payment. They don't do so well. Yes, it's probably got multipliers, but they don't do so well. So I'm looking to get out of that and put it into something else, which is what will form the additions. Deletions, also Casta. Again, another payments platform. They don't do so well. Kronos has shown that. They don't, or crypto.com. They don't do so well. So I'm going to be exiting that position as soon as. And then Shiba Inu. Not really that fussed about it anymore. I think it will do well. I think it will surpass its old all-time high. But I don't care that much for it anymore. So those are ones I'm looking to offload uh, pretty soon, I would say. Additions. So what I'm looking to add, Game Swift, if it comes down to a good price, simply because I personally think that this is the start of a really good gaming ecosystem. Wag Me Games, same thing. Another kind of gala-esque cryptocurrency. If that goes down low enough, I will buy it. It's still actually a low market cap, but I would want it to be lower. Then Token Fight. This is good exposure to memes, launch pads, and real-world assets all in one. Increases. So what am I looking to increase on? Avalanche? I want more Avalanche. I want to have a much bigger position on Avalanche, even if it comes with not investing at the absolute lowest. I think that I've got to be kind of happy that I've invested most at the lowest, but I've also got to not be too greedy and think I can afford to get a bit more. But I'd have to wait for it to come down a little bit more than it is now. Shrapnel, definitely want to at least triple what I've got in Shrapnel so far, because I think that's a, I think that's an absolute belter in the future. Playable games, you know I want to increase this anyway. If this goes down more, I will add actual cash into the position rather than just what I'm DCAing via the nodes. Ava launch, I would get more of at this point just simply because Star Launch is doing well. Ava launch can do well and there is no um, there's no alternative. And then SWE. SWE, I don't think I've got anywhere near enough of a position. These will come on a retracement opportunity so when the the asset comes down suitably enough i will look to buy it right i don't want to make this too long and i've already made it very very long two hours 11 which is the arguably the biggest portfolio video yet so um let me just have a look and just see if there's any super chats in the meantime Neil, price prediction for Gunsiller and Blundley. It's difficult to say without having a token price to start with. So I couldn't answer that, unfortunately. Fast Abdul. There is a convex fork called Two Fucks coming to Pulse Chain. I'm all in. Do my studliness. Not for most of you guys. Okay. Two Fucks. Creo is 20x. Cool. Creo is shit. That did well on the osmosis. But that just gives you an example that gives you an example of what I was talking about with the high-risk coins. Like, when people talk, when a big YouTuber talks about it, and I know a big YouTuber talks about it, that's when it moves. Otherwise, it's a piece of shit until then. And I didn't want to be that YouTuber that said a pile of shit coin was going was gonna, to... That, that person can, can do it ad nauseum if he wants to. Yeah, he does do it ad nauseum. He does talk about every shit coin there is that hasn't pumped, makes it pump, but it's still shit. I don't really want to make this a chat one. I apologise, people. I can't chat too long because it's already a long video. Um, can you check animal concerts? I've, I've checked that before. It's a, it, it came out in the last bull market, and I imagine it's... Interesting, though. The volume's interesting. 49%. This is, this, is, this is what I mean by kind of chasing highs. It's just like disrupting music entertainment. 
I'll look at this another another time. But it's shit to be honest. Um, so where's pith, pith inflationary? Yes, I believe it is, but it's not that bad from what I understand. Okay, people. So there we are. So I hope that that um, I hope that this gave you a very good understanding of what cryptocurrencies I have earmarked for making large multipliers in the next bull market, which I think is going to be astronomically incredible. What I will say is, is that you don't have to put all your chips in before the bull market. You can do it during the bull market. Bull to bull investments are just as incredible as investing before the bull. Because at least you know during a bull market what the sentiment is for a particular type of coin. And sometimes if you're investing too early before a bear market, what you're investing in is some outdated technology that no one gives a shit about anymore. So that's why it's always good to wait until a bull market and make some bull to bull investments. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, portfolio, people. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Till next time, it is lights out.